This question asks, list the following phenol derivatives in order of increasing acidity. So acidity is impacted by several things that we've talked about in the past using the acronym CARIO. We have charge, we have atom, we have resonance, we have induction, and we have orbital. Um, in this instance, um, we have a set of benzene derivatives, all of which have an OH group, so they're all phenol derivatives, but we also have other substituents present on the ring. We have an amine, an aldehyde, a nitro group, and an alkyl group. And so the question is, how are those different substituents impacting um, the conjugate base that we would make in each instance? So um, kind of the surefire way to kind of test this is to draw out resonance contributors um, and kind of think about how resonance is involved. Um, we can kind of cross off charge and atom from our consideration because um, all of these species are gonna have a carbon atom, or not a carbon, sorry, an oxygen atom with a negative charge. Um, and so they'll all kind of be equivalent in that regard. And then they all have a negatively charged um, oxygen atom. So they'll all have the same atom. So resonance is kind of the next key thing to look at. And we can use that to distinguish um, our molecules. So the first molecule is just phenol and that's kind of the baseline. It doesn't have any substituents on it except for say like a hydrogen right there. So it has three resonance contributors. Next we have our amine. So if we draw out the conjugate base of this molecule, it would look like this. And the important thing to note is that the nitrogen atom has a lone pair. And so when we draw the resonance contributors for this molecule, we will push the um, electron density of the oxygen atom around the molecule until we get to this. And then we can push it one more time until we get to this contributor. And in this instance, we can see that we have a negative charge adjacent to that nitrogen that bears a lone pair, and that's destabilizing. So anytime you have a lone pair that's going to be in the ortho or pair position, and um, it can kind of have this instance when you draw the resonance contributor where that negative charge is directly adjacent to the lone pair, which is destabilizing. So this is gonna give us a big hint. It means that anytime you have like an electron donating group with a lone pair adjacent to the ring like this, so amines, alcohols, um, et cetera, you're going to encounter this issue where you, again, you have that uh, negative charge, that lone pair next to this lone pair, which is not gonna help stabilize your base. So that means this is gonna be um, higher in energy. So if we take a look at our other examples, none of them have a lone pair directly adjacent. Um, we have carbon here, this nitrogen, and then this uh, neutral carbon with no lone pairs. So this one is probably gonna be our um, highest energy conjugate base. So that means it's not stable. And so this will be our strongest acid. because we've destabilized the conjugate base. Um, next, let's take a look at the aldehyde. For the aldehyde, we can draw the conjugate base that looks like this. And here, when we um, get to the resonance contributors, we will have this molecule, oops, And then we can again push the electron density down. To here. And this is a key resonance contributor because we can draw one more um, resonance contributor from there where the carbonyl bond that's adjacent to the ring can help um, act as an electron reservoir and help stabilize the um, negative charge right there. So this is the opposite of what we saw with the amine. Here, the electron withdrawing group helps stabilize the conjugate base. So we can say right away, three is gonna be more stable than two. And that means that um, the more stable your conjugate base, um, the stronger your acid. So we're gonna have a weaker acid here in three compared to two. Um, is three the most stable conjugate base? To answer that question, we have to look at the other options. Um, next up, we have four. 
and four is a nitro group. And in the case of four, we have a nitrogen atom that looks like this when it's attached. And it can also act as an electron reservoir. And if you think back to our conversations about whether or not substituents are strong activators, strong deactivators, et cetera, we know that the nitro group is a strong deactivator, which means it's going to withdraw electron density very strongly. Okay, and if we compare that to the aldehyde, the aldehyde is a moderate deactivator. So four is actually gonna be the most stable conjugate base because the nitro group is the strongest deactivator. So um, four is gonna be the most stable. We can cross off A, B, and C over here because we know four is gonna um, stabilize its conjugate base the most. If we look at the other molecules, the amine group is a strong activator and the ethyl group over here is a weak activator. So we can actually use our discussion about whether or not we have strong, moderate, or weak deactivators and activators to help um, figure out the order of acidity here. So we've already said four is gonna make the most stable conjugate base. Therefore, it'll be the strongest acid, um, followed by three because three is a moderate deactivator. So already I can see what our answer is. Um, next, we have molecule um, one. One doesn't have any activators or deactivators on it. And then five are weak activator, followed by two are strong activator. So the answer to this question is E. And we're kind of using our knowledge here about um, activating and deactivating substituents, kind of um, tie that into kind of big picture topic, which is acidity, something that we've kind of been talking about all of our um, organic chemistry careers.